In today's session, we will talk about a very popular data mining technique called decision trees. This technique is liked by data miners and analysts the world over because of its intuitive nature and user-friendly results. Let us take some time to understand how this technique works. We will take the example of a credit card company that has a set of customers. Some of them are profitable, some of them are not. Customers who do not use their credit cards frequently or those who use the card but diligently pay their bills on time are examples of customers who are not profitable for credit card companies. Customers who carry balances on their cards, that is, customers who do not make their card payments in full or on time, are examples of customers who are profitable for the company. On our slide, we will denote profitable customers with red dots and unprofitable customers with blue crosses. In our simplified example, let us assume the company has five profitable and five unprofitable customers. This box here represents the company's customer base. It has five red dots, that is, five profitable customers, and five blue crosses, that is, five unprofitable customers. These are the company's existing customers. Outside this box is a large population of potential customers. Potential customers are people who are not the customers of this company, but the company can market to these customers so they have the potential to be its customers. These customers are denoted by green squares. The company doesn't yet know if these customers will be profitable once they become customers. Now, the credit card company has a fixed marketing budget that allows it to market its products to a limited set of people out of this large population of potential customers. The company wants to utilize its marketing budget in such a way that it attracts the maximum number of profitable customers. In a sense, the company is saying, I have 10 customers, 5 of whom are profitable and 5 are unprofitable. I want to add 10 more customers to my customer base, but I want all or most of them to be profitable. So, in effect, the company wants to focus its marketing budget only on those people who are likely to be profitable if they become the company's customers. This is an interesting problem. How can the credit card company predict if a person will be a profitable customer or not before the person even becomes a customer? This is where analytics and the power of historical data come in. The company has certain information available about its potential customers. For example, age, gender, marital status and the number of credit cards they already own. It wants to see if any of these variables can help predict the profitability of a potential customer. How will the company find this out? For this, let us examine the company's existing customer base. The same information is available to the company about its current customer base also. It knows their age, gender, marital status and the number of cards already owned. Please examine this table in some detail. In the existing customer base, Five of the customers are profitable and five are unprofitable. Hence, the profitability rate of the total customer base is 50%. Now, let us partition the data into two segments based on the age variable. Let us put those who are 35 and above in the left segment and those below 35 in the right segment. Examine the profitability rate of the two segments. 
the left segment has four profitable customers and two unprofitable customers. That is a profitability rate of 66%. In other words, two thirds of the customers who are above 35 are profitable customers. Compare this with the overall population profitability rate of 50% and we have an important insight. People who are 35 and above tend to be more profitable customers for the credit card company than the average population. This means if the company markets its products only to people who are above 35, it will end up with a more profitable customer base. Now let us see if we can further segment this population into smaller segments, some of which have an even higher profitability. We will segment this population of people over 35 by the marital status variable, that is whether a person is single or married. The population is segmented into two separate groups, one comprising of married people and the other made up of single people. Notice the left hand box now. It has four customers, all of whom are profitable. This segment of population, that is people who are over 35 and married, has a profitability rate of 100%. We have now identified a small segment of population that is highly profitable for the credit card company. We have also learned that the credit card company needs to focus its marketing efforts on people who are above 35 and married as these people are likely to be profitable customers. This is an example of a business using historical data of its existing customers to predict the behavior of potential future customers in order to build a more profitable customer base. In particular, we have seen how the decision tree technique is used in predictive modeling. This is a simplified example with four variables and 10 records. In this example, we first segment the data on the age variable. Further, we used age greater than or equal to 35 as the splitting criteria. How do we know which variable to use for the split at what time? And how do we know what level to split the variable at? In a real business situation, you will be dealing with hundreds of variables and thousands or millions of records. How do you make these decisions in such a scenario? This is where decision trees come in. There are various decision tree algorithms that allow the analyst to choose the right variable from thousands of available variables and split the variable at the most optimal value. In the following slides, we will learn more about the decision tree technique and the various algorithms underlying this technique.